give you praise. We give you praise. Hallelujah. We give you praise. We give you praise. Hallelujah. 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 Good evening, everyone, and you're welcome to Life Springs Church Midweek Service. We trust you are having a wonderful week. Hallelujah. Amen. This, this has been a very good week for us. Yes. <laughs> we've been we've been poured into and we just thank God for the opportunity to get refreshed. Amen. Yes, at a and we conference. Know, yes, at, at yeah. a, a great conference. And, yes. and we trust God has something special for everyone tonight. And that's yeah. one thing I love about our services. God always has something special Amen. for us. So, you know, so let's just go ahead and invite him and, and just let him be and do what he wants to do. Heavenly mm. Father, we want to thank you again for your love for us, mm. your people. Mm. Thank you that you love us so much. Yes, Lord. Thank you because you love us. Mm. You are going to do us good mm. tonight. And so, Father, we receive your word for Amen. this meeting. Amen. We receive your move. Mm. We receive answers. We mm. receive encouragement. <laughs> we receive strength. Mm. We receive favor. Mm. We receive what you want to give. Mm. And Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We want to say thank you. We declare you, your Lord. name will be glorified. Amen. Your people will be edified. Amen. And the works of the devil shall be destroyed. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, we want to encourage you to just go ahead and join us as we spend some time in praise and worship, and we just honor the Lord. Amen. Amen. Light to you or to me, it says, "A seed shall endure forever, and is thrown as the sun before me. It shall be established forever, like the moon, even like the faithful witness in the sky." And before we go into a time of worship today, I just want you to know that no matter your past, no matter what you feel guilty about. God's loving kindness will never leave you. God's loving kindness will never leave you. And then verse 34 says, my covenant I will not break. God will not break his covenant with us. This first song we're going to sing talks about how God is a covenant keeping God. He's a covenant keeping God. And I just want us to meditate on that. Meditate on the fact that he keeps his covenant with us. Glory be to God. The song says, you'll never leave me. You will not forsake me. You're right beside me. As we sing those songs, I want you to let it permeate your thoughts, your heart, and let, just let that sink in. Thank you, Lord. forsake me you're right beside me and that is all that matters you'll never leave me you'll never leave me you said that you would forsake me you're right beside
flood won't sweep, the flood won't sweep me. The Lord is my anchor. The sun will smite me, and the moon it will not hurt me. Oh, the flood won't sweep me. The Lord is my anchor. sing a part of that song that says the Lord is my anchor. Thank you for being the covenant keeping God. Thank you for being the covenant keeping God. Hallelujah. Thank you for being the covenant keeping God. Oh glory to your name oh God we praise you we thank you we bless you oh God we give you all the glory we give you all the praise hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. 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 thank you for your covenant that you will not break <laughs> thank you Lord for your covenant oh God you know I've just um, as we were singing that song mm. Psalm 121 came to my heart mm. and I'll just go ahead and read it mm. It says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. Hallelujah. He who keeps you will not slumber. Mm. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. And there are so many other blessings like that Hallelujah. that we enjoy as Hallelujah. his children. And so for that, we thank the Lord. Amen. So let's just go ahead and just pray and thank oh, God right thank now. You, Lord, we, Lord thank we thank you for the covenant that we have with you. The covenant of, of salvation, the covenant of peace, the covenant of protection, the covenant of hope the covenant of strength, the covenant of protection, of preservation, oh God. All these things we have in our salvation, oh God. We just want to say thank you. Hallelujah. We want to thank you, Lord, because you will not break your covenant with us. You are indeed the covenant-keeping God. And Lord, as a church, as a family, as an individual, Lord, we just want to say thank you, thank you. that we can look to you the author and the finisher of our faith. Amen. We can look to you. We can trust in you. Wow. We can lay hold on what you've promised us in your word. Amen. That's what we're doing this Hallelujah. evening. And we just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
Father. And Lord, we just welcome you to our midst today. Amen. We say, have your way. Let your will be done. Let every life be changed. Let every burden be removed. Let every yoke be destroyed in the name of Jesus. We pray that even here and in the homes and cars, um, in the spaces where everyone else is listening, Lord, we pray that your presence would saturate and permeate that space, all these spaces and touch our lives in ways we have never imagined lord we just look to you for your blessing and for a free flow of your spirit for your mighty touch and mighty move tonight in jesus name amen, amen. hallelujah hallelujah amen amen amen, amen. well welcome <laughs> To Life Springs Church. Amen. And it's <laughs> nice to have Pastor Kemi back. She's missed um, the last two yes. meetings. Have yes. been. So, but it's nice to have you back. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. I'm glad to be back. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yes. And um, looking forward to hearing more about um, the Discipleship Series and what God has in store. Um, but I'll just quickly welcome everybody. Welcome to our midweek service here at Life Springs Church. We're so honored to have you and we really want to encourage you to join us in person this Sunday at 2 p.m. We meet mm -hmm. at Community Christian Church, 1635 Emerson Lane, Naperville, Illinois, 60540 every Sunday at 2 p.m. and we'll love to have you and worship with you in person. So see you there. Amen. 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 So I know we've been uh, working on the call, call to, to discipleship. discipleship. And um, it's one of those series where um, God wants to remind us and, and, and have us have the proper perspective. Mm. You know, one of, the, one of the most important things about life is if you don't have the right perspective, you can be in the midst of something great and not know it. Mm. I mean, a lot of people were around Jesus when Jesus was on the face of the earth. Mm. And they did not understand they were in the, in the presence of the one who made everything mm. because they didn't have the right perspective. So mm. perspective is so important. Mm. And we're talking about um, who is a disciple mm. and that's what God has called us to. Mm. And um, we've emphasized um, throughout the series that um, Jesus distinguished between the multitudes and the disciples. Mm. And, um, and as believers... The goal is not to be part of the multitude. Mm. The goal is to be a disciple. Mm. And if you don't understand that, you will not understand how Jesus operated. You will not understand the call on a believer's life. Mm. And you, you will not understand why we do what we do. Mm. So it's so important. I, I'm just going to go ahead and um, read a uh, couple of scriptures again. I want us to go back to we, we've read this before let's go back to matthew chapter 5 and and i want to emphasize there is a difference between the multitudes and the disciples and if there's a difference if jesus treated them differently and jesus christ is the same hmm. yesterday today and forever then he's still treating them differently hmm. and if so we should also have that mindset. Now notice what he said, um, verse 1, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 1, and said, And seeing the, the multitude, he went up on a mountain, and when he, when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Hmm. Then he opened his mouth and he taught them, his disciples. So it's like Jesus made it. One of the things you will notice is Jesus healed the multitude. Yeah. Jesus fed the multitude. Hmm. But Jesus spoke to the multitudes in parables. Mm. He only explained things to his disciples. Mm. And so if you are not a disciple, you, you will hear, mm. but you wouldn't really understand. Mm. You know? And then if you, I, I want you to go to the book of um, Acts. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, the Bible talks about how Let's let's actually before Acts, let's go to Mark sixteen. Hallelujah. Mark sixteen. Now this is after the resurrection, and the angel um, told in verse seven after the re resurrection, Mark sixteen and verse seven, the angel told the the um, ladies who went to the tomb. He says, "But go, tell 
his disciples hmm. and Peter. Hmm. That's a very interesting thing because Peter thought that he had fallen, but hmm. no, God, inclu including Peter, hmm. that he's going before you into Galilee. And I want hmm. you to understand this. This is Jesus had just risen from the dead and he didn't tell everybody. Hmm. He, he didn't tell everybody he had risen until he ascended to heaven. Hmm. <laughs> While he was on earth, after the resurrection, between those days, those 40 days, he was appearing and he only appeared to his disciples. Mm. He only taught his disciples mm. and he only spoke to his disciples. And in fact, let's, let's go back. We've read this before, but let's go to 1 Corinthians and chapter 15. Um, and it talks about in verse 6 and talking about the resurrection. It says, after that, he, speaking of Jesus, mm. was seen by over 500 brethren at once, mm. of whom the greater part remain to the present. Mm. So Jesus appeared to over 500 people, mm. but they were disciples. Mm -hmm. In fact, some of them, you could say, what happened to them? Why were why, one day on the day of Pentecost? I don't know. Because they should have been there. There were only 100. So in other words, 120. 120. So out of the 500, only 120 were real hardcore mm. disciples. But notice, Jesus only revealed himself to the disciples mm. until the resurrection. So that means, mm. then, I mean, until the ascension. Then after that, he now told them, go tell everybody. Yeah. You know, very interesting, and and it's such a such an interesting thing. And we we said several things about who a disciple is. I'm just going to quickly run through that. Um, a disciple is one who follows. Mm. Is one who follows. They have the mindset. They are following after so they can be like. Amen. They are following after so that they can be like. Mm. So one of the key characteristics of a disciple is one who follows. Another one is one who considers Jesus their Lord. Yes. And their teacher, yes. they, they are not. They, they know Jesus is is um, knows more than them. They are not trying to argue with Jesus. Mm. Jesus is their Lord. Jesus is their teacher. One who receives commands mm. <laughs> from the Lord, mm. <laughs> and you can you, you they have that mindset. You know that the Lord can command me. You know the Bible talks about how He commanded them. Mm. He commanded them. Mm. Now he, he Jesus didn't command everybody, but He commanded. His, his disciples, disciples, you know, they, um, and then he, we see that um, they, they, they have responsibility in the kingdom. They have authority. They have power. Mm -hmm. Jesus called them and he gave them a responsibility. Mm -hmm. So a disciple is an apprentice, one who comes to learn so that they can be. So part of their mindset is, yes, I want to come and take some responsibility. And I'm not just coming to receive. I'm coming to be part of what is going on. Mm. I'm, I have ownership. You know, they take on the cause of Christ. So mm. it's not just the cause of Christ. It is their cause mm. because they have ownership. You know, mm. you know, others associate them with Jesus. That's very interesting. Others associate them with Jesus. You know, they, they, they said, they told Jesus that, why do, why do the disciples of the Pharisees fast and the disciples of John fast? But your disciples do not fast. Mm. You know, my question is, if somebody sees you, do they associate you with Jesus? Mm. Because the disciples are associated with Jesus. Mm. They, there's a way they live that people say, oh, this one is Christ-like. This one yes. is following after Christ. Yes. You know, but if you are not associated with Jesus, you're not trying to be like Jesus, then the question is, are you a disciple? Mm. You know, they, 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 um, they are inquisitive inquisitive they want to learn mm. they, they keep asking questions again they are, the, jesus is our substitute yes that means he did things for us we couldn't do for ourselves mm. like dying on the cross for us mm. by shedding his blood for us but mm. jesus is all, also our example mm. and there's many things he did as our example mm. and as our example a disciple is trying to learn so that they can be hmm. like him. Yeah. So that they can be in in fact let's let's look at the scripture um Matthew 10 and verse 24. Matthew 10 and verse 24. A disciple is one who has a goal, has a mindset 
you want to be like your master. Can, can you please read it first? Yes. A disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. Verse 25. It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they call those of his household? Amen. Now, but I want you to see this. You see, a, a disciple is somebody who wants to be like his master. Yeah. In other words, the treasure of a disciple's heart is to be like the master. Mm. Now, that's, that's, that's like profound mm. because some people want to go to heaven, but they don't want to be like Jesus. Mm. <laughs> they want to go to heaven. They don't want mm. to go to hell. I mean, thank God. We all, we, nobody wants to go to hell. But they don't want to be like Jesus. Mm. But the goal is, the, the invitation is, I want you to be like me. Mm. The invitation is, I want you to do what I'm doing. Mm. The invitation is, I want you to act like me. The invitation is, I want you to talk like me. The invitation is, I want you to think like me. The invitation is to be a disciple. And if you don't have that mindset, then you will read the Bible and you will not see what Jesus is saying. Mm. You know, the invitation is not to, just to go to heaven. That, that's, yes, mm. he wants us to go to heaven. But it's so that we can be where he is, mm. to be like him. Because the, the call is to be a disciple. Yeah. That is the call. And he's showing us, oh, this is what I'm doing. Then I want you to do it. Amen. And, and last, last time we, we started talking about two things important. Um, that there is a price to being a disciple. But there's also a reward to being a disciple. Now, if you don't understand the reward the price could sound high. Mm. So let's first look at the price. And, and let's go to um, Luke 14. Luke 14 and verse tw starting from verse 26. And I remember the first day I read this. You know, you, you've been reading the Bible, but the first day, let me say it sank in. It's like, Jesus, are you really sure that's what he meant? Mm. <laughs> you know, let's start from verse 25. Again, Jesus distinguished between the multitudes and the disciples. Mm. In verse 25, it says, Now great multitudes went with him. Mm. <laughs> and he turned and said to them, the mm. multitudes, mm. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life also. He cannot be my disciples. It, it, to the, the first, I remember when I read it, it's almost like Jesus was discouraging the multitudes. Mm. I know that's not what he was doing, mm. but it was almost like, this is really what I want. Mm. I'm happy you are coming, mm. but this is what I want. You know? And I remember reading this. I initially, when I was reading this, I thought Jesus said, if anyone um, comes to me and does not hate living in sin, <laughs> does not hate being a terrible person, <laughs> he cannot be mad. But that's not what he said. Notice what he said, if anyone comes and does not hate his father. I mean, the same God who said, honor your father and your mother, mm. that it may be well with you that you may live long. Mm. The same God who prioritized, I mean, the, 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 the parent relationship is, is one that has a divine blessing upon it. Yet, he's giving you that if you want to be my disciple, mm. this is the cost. Yeah. That's a profound statement. You yeah. have to hate. Now, mm. what does it mean hate? It means prefer. Mm. You mean, in other words, you have to prefer me. Above those other things. Now, is it wrong to want to please your parents? No. Is it wrong to want to make your parents proud? No. But if you are going to be a disciple, one of the costs mm. you are going to have to pay is something that is good, you are going to have to put Jesus better than that. Mm. You see, if he, Jesus has said that if anyone comes to me and does not 
stop sinning. Hmm. It made sense because, hmm. uh, yeah. But he's talking about something that most people will think is good. Hmm. See, he said, you have to hate father and mother, wife. Who, who, <laughs> you know, I can imagine <laughs> on the wedding day, he said, honey, <laughs> <laughs> I just want you to know I hate you. Hey. <laughs> Will you marry me? <laughs> no, no, no. But, but my point is this. Preference. Yeah. Preference. God still wants to be the priority. You know? So sometimes people come and say, well, my spouse said I should do this, but Jesus said I should do this. What do you think, pastor? Jesus has already given you his mm. answer. <laughs> because mm. he said, if anyone comes after me, and does not hate wife and children. You know, sometimes I hear we Christians say, I will do anything for my children. And it's, a, it's such a loving thing to say, mm. but it's not scriptural. Mm. I, in a sense, I understand what people are saying now. If mm. what you say is you will do anything for your children under the, under the boundary and within the boundaries of God, fine. Yeah. But... It has to be within the boundaries of God because mm. Jesus said, I expect you mm. to put me above your children. Yeah. <laughs> Brother, sisters, mm. these, these are your support system. Mm. These are the people that if you have problems, you run to. <laughs> these are the people that you have your back. Yeah. These are the people that God, remember God was the one who gave you your father. God is one who gave you your mother. God is one who gave you your spouse. Or God should be the one to give you your spouse. Mm. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, God, God should be the one who gives you your spouse. Mm. God is one who gives you your children. God is one who gives you your siblings. Yet, he expects you to put him above him. Then he said, yes, and your own life. So God expects you to put him above even your own interest. Mm. What you feel. So, pastor, I feel like doing this, but God said I should do this. What should I do? The decision mm. has already been made if you're a disciple. Mm. So, the first question of it, the first, the first um, um, what do you call it, um, price a disciple has to pay is a decision of who is priority. Mm. This, is a tough, this is a tough one. Mm. You know, because many, many believers are not taught to think this way. Mm. And so many times we, 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 we let life happen to us. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Is there anything you want to say? No, just uh, the fact that it's interesting mm -hmm. that we are, if, if we want to be disciples, effective disciples, mm -hmm. we cannot afford to be in the crowd. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. many of us believers are very content being in, in the, the crowd, crowd. Mm -hmm. especially when, well, I was going to say, especially when, you know, it's like a big church setting, mm -hmm. but even in smaller church settings, mm -hmm. we're just kind of comfortable with, mm -hmm. well, I have my walk with the Lord. Mm -hmm. I know I'm going to heaven because I'm saved. Mm -hmm. And it ends there. For mm -hmm. so many believers, yeah, I don't yeah. have the statistics right now, mm -hmm. but God is calling us believers to be disciples. Yeah. You know, Jesus would have been perfectly happy having 2,000 disciples. They oh, could have yeah. turned his, the his whole goal world around. Was to, his goal is to, his, his, his invitation yes. is for everybody to be a disciple. Yes. Yes, but not yes. everybody wants to be. Yes. So he's telling them the cost. Mm. Now, the, the thing that captures my heart, in, I mean, that captures my attention is that he said that you cannot. Mm. He said, even who comes to me and does not do all these things, he said, he cannot. Mm. <laughs> not he may not. Mm. He, he didn't even say you, 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 you won't be a good disciple. He said, you cannot be a disciple. Mm. I was like, wow. Mm. <laughs> so the first decision you have to make is the, the, this decision that who, who, who am I? <laughs> who, 
who who is number one? Yeah. Who do I answer to? Who do I? And yeah. and that is you don't answer to yourself. Do I yeah. You don't answer to your family. Yeah. Now, not that now within the boundaries of God. Yes, we respect our parents. Yes, yes. we respect our spouses. Yes, we yeah. respect our siblings. Yes. But when it comes to an issue of God or family, yeah. God has already given us a decision. Yes. yes. God has given us a decision, yes. and we need to understand that. Yes. And, and and I mean, I remember. I mean, I'm a family life pastor, so you know, I talk a lot about marriage and all these things. And when I saw it, I said, "Wow, that we Christians need to think this way." Hmm. This is what he said. Hmm. Then he goes on to say, "For you, you want to say something before I, I keep reading?" Just one more thing there, where he says in verse twenty six, mm-hmm. "Yes, and his own life mm-hmm. also." Yeah. Wow, that's profound because Mm -hmm. it's not, even after I say, okay, yes, Lord, Mm -hmm. I prioritize you. Mm -hmm. I I choose to serve you. I want to follow after you. Even my own desires and my preferences need to be submitted to his lordship. And, And this is the balance because some people in the name of religion, they use scriptures like this to abuse their parents. Hmm. But even you too. Yeah. yeah. You know, so you remember Jesus, <laughs> they came to Jesus and they said, that why, why is it that your disciples um, don't, fast. don't follow, no, don't follow the traditions of the elders. Mm, mm, they, mm. they don't eat, I mean, they don't wash their hands when they eat. And then Jesus said, why do you use your traditions to, you know, to nullify mm. the word of God, the commandment of God? Mm. You, and, and then Jesus said, God said, Honor your father and your mother, and anyone mm. who doesn't do it should put to be put to death. Mm. But you people say if somebody brings a gift to church, mm. <laughs> he's he's absolved from the responsibility of taking care of his parents. So this, so so people sometimes can twist yeah. the scripture. Yeah, yeah. So Jesus is not saying you are trying to find a reason to be mean to your spouse. Mm-hmm. Then you come and say, oh, Jesus said I should treat, mm. and then you, you are hiding under Jesus. No, mm. the, the, this is, you are not hiding under Jesus. You, just the same standard you give to your parents, you give mm. to yourself. You are not, you are not, you are, you are putting Jesus above your own mm. interest. Yes. That is what he's saying. This is important yes. because a religious spirit will, you know, twist this yeah. and that's where abuse comes yeah. and people in the name of you know are observing god they begin to abuse their their, their spouse and they abuse their children mm. that's not what we're talking about we're mm. talking about a genuinely putting the interest of jesus first mm. now we know jesus puts our interest first so jesus is not going to say go and abuse your children mm-hmm. go and abuse your parents go and oh, abuse yourself, yourself yeah. or yourself you know but there is a mindset where we put Jesus first. Yes. Amen. Amen. And then Jesus went on to say, For which one of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it? Lest after he has laid the foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, hmm. saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king going to war against another king does not sit down first and consider whether he's able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000? Hmm. Or else while the other is still a great way off, he sends a delegation and asks for conditions of peace. Hmm. So Jesus is saying that this issue of being a disciple, I, I don't, I, you, it, you count the cost. Hmm. Then he says, so likewise, Whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot, cannot. Hmm. That was the thing that stood out to me. He didn't say (laughs) will not or may not or Mm. might not. He said cannot. Hmm. It is impossible to be a disciple if you do not have a mindset where you are ready to forsake all. Wow. Now, that is the call. Mm. And a, a disciple will have to forsake something, mm. but the disciple must be willing to forsake all. That's right. 
every disciple will forsake something but mm. a disciple must be willing to forsake all mm. now what some people might forsake might be different than others mm. but if you don't have a willingness to forsake all you cannot be a disciple mm. but if you don't understand that wow lord you're asking for a lot <laughs> you are demanding for a lot yes but if you don't understand the reward the sacrifice is a lot yeah and so again, I use this example. We read it, I believe, in Matthew 13. And I want us to go where Jesus was talking about the kingdom. And he said, the kingdom of heaven is like a man. Matthew what? At Matthew 13, I believe. Yes. Matthew 13, verse 44. I, I, and he says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid. Mm. And for the joy over it, he goes and sells all mm. that he has mm. and buys that field. Mm. So notice the first, this, the sacrifice was great. Yeah. But what he was getting was far beyond what he was given. Mm. So I, I remember when God first gave me this understanding, it changed my it, it just blessed me. said, so imagine you have a field that inside the field there are treasures worth over a billion dollars. Okay. And let's just assume you have a hundred thousand dollars in your account. That's all you have. Mm. If you put everything together, you are worth a hundred thousand mm. dollars. Is it worth selling everything you have to buy that field for? that is selling for a hundred thousand so that you can get the billion dollars mm -hmm. yes it is but it can only be if you value the treasures yeah so is the cost of being a disciple a lot yeah mm. it is mm. <laughs> but what you are getting is far yeah. more than what you are you, you yeah. are trading for your life mm. for his life yeah. <laughs> but it's costing you your life. Yes. But you are trading your life for his life. <laughs> and you know, you know one thing that's also amazing? Mm -hmm. The fact that what we claim it costs us yeah. came from him. That is true. <laughs> it comes from him. So mm -hmm. if he's asking he's us to let go of that to receive something even greater, greater why not? But even if not, you know, you will be blessed. But even if not, mm -hmm. what God has done for yes. us is enough for me to say, yes, yes. Lord. And he has already you proved know. it. Yes. But yes. if you don't value it, yeah. then the... I mean, if you have a hundred thousand dollars to you and you think the value of the field, the treasure in the field is only worth one thousand dollars. Mm. Would you give up your hundred thousand dollars for that one thousand no. dollars? And that's that's where many believers are. They don't see the value mm. of the cross. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Jesus saved me, but I mean I wasn't that I wasn't too bad of a person. But when you don't see the value of the cross, mm. and when you don't see the value of what the, the invitation is I want you to follow to be like me. Yeah. <laughs> if, you, you know, yeah. he, said, he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Mm. And Matthew 4. Mm -hmm. He said, follow me. I will make you fishers of men. Mm. I, I will make you like me. Mm. Come and learn. Come and take my yoke upon you. For my yoke is easy. My body is like... Mm. It, 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 it's an invitation to be part of him he said as the father has life in himself so the son has life in himself now he's giving us his life mm. his life now is that life value is, is the value of that life wow yeah. then the cost is, is so I, I want you to see what paul said in let's go to philippians 3 because if you don't have this mindset mm. you cannot be a disciple so, yes, there is a cost to being a disciple. 
it's it's not a cost let me rephrase it there's a cost you have to to pay to receive being in itself it's not like you are giving god this Mm. it's like you have to depart from something to become something Mm. you 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 know the bible talks about peter and james were i mean peter and andrew they were they were fishermen Fishermen. and jesus said follow me Mm. so for them to follow him they had to leave something they had to leave their business. Mm. I don't know how long they had been fishermen. Mm. That was a lot. Mm. <laughs> it was a lot of money. It was a lot. I mean, but he said, but I'll make you. Mm. Now, if you don't believe that I'll make, mm. or if you don't think that I'll make is far more valuable, mm. then you can't leave. Yeah. So, yes, there's, there, you have to leave to follow. That's mm. the cost. Mm. You know? So, look at uh, Philippians. Philippians... Um, um, let's start from Philippians 3. And I want you to see Paul beginning to recount what he had without Christ. And then look at what he said about Christ. Notice what he said, starting from verse 4. He says, Though I also might have confidence in the flesh, hmm. if anyone else thinks that he may have confidence in the flesh, I am also circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, concerning the law a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is of the law, blameless. Hmm. So from Paul's point of view, I was I I I, I had it going. Hmm. From a natural standpoint of view, yes, I was doing well. Hmm. Then he goes on to say, but what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yeah. Yet indeed I also count all things loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things. Now, it's one thing to suffer the loss of all things. But of one thing. Uh, but notice the next phrase is mm. where I'm going. And count them rubbish. Mm, yeah. So he said number one, I suffered the loss of all things. All things. But that is the secret is I count it rubbish mm. that I may gain Christ. Yeah. So if because it compared to gaining Christ, what I had was rubbish. What I lost didn't amount to much. That is a profound statement. Mm. <laughs> For somebody who is accomplished, it was like a PhD in many things. That's a profound statement. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 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 So that I can gain Christ. Mm. It, it costs, but <laughs> what we get is far up. And, mm. and But if you don't value Christ, mm. if gaining Christ, being like Christ, notice what he says, I want to gain Christ to be found in him, not having mm. my own righteousness, which mm. is from the Lord, but that which is, which is true faith in Christ Jesus, mm. the righteousness which is from God by faith, that I may know him. Mm. The invitation is to be like him mm. and the power of his resurrection. And the fellowship of his suffering, mm. being conformed to his death, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Mm. There's something about wanting to be like Jesus, mm. talk like Jesus, do the works of Jesus, mm. think like Jesus. If I can attain that, mm. wow, that is what, what, what. So, to him, he could. The, the devil. The devil was frustrated because. If the devil stole from him, boy, he said, oh, well, it was already rubbish anyway. Mm. <laughs> because he valued Christ. Now, don't get me wrong. Christ restores. Mm. <laughs> Christ blesses. Mm. So one thing that we love about our, our Lord and our Savior, he, mm. he gave us all. Mm. He gave us his best. He's given us his promises. Yeah. He's given us his spirit. Mm. He's given us his word. He's given mm. us his life. Mm. He's given us his blessings. Mm. He's given us his wealth. Yeah. He's given us his, I mean, his honor. He, he, so we are not, we are talking about the one who loved us and died for us. Mm. But we have to value him 
to be able to be a disciple. Amen. This is such a profound thing. Discipleship costs, mm. but what we get out of it is far more. Mm. But if we don't tell people it costs, we're lying to them. Because Jesus said, you, you cannot be my disciple if you mm. don't, you are not willing to walk away from it. Mm. That's a profound statement. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah. Glory so, be so to God. So we're basically saying we're going to deny ourselves mm -hmm. and the things that we love. Mm -hmm. and the th in other words, and not that we're saying we're not going to enjoy, mm -hmm. but we're going to prioritize God. And the things of God mm -hmm. above the mm -hmm. things that we desire. Amen. Amen. And it, and again, it, once we begin to think like this, it's like wow. Mm. Uh, let's 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 look at Matthew chapter ten. Again, it's it's a similar. We we read we read twenty verse twenty four, I believe earlier that a teacher a disciple is not above his teacher, and then if we if we go still going down. Um, Verse 32 says, Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. Mm. And whoever denies me before men, mm. him I will also deny before my Father which is, who is in heaven. Mm. Do not think I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword. Mm. In other words, there is, there is a division mm. that comes. Mm. For I have come to set a man against his father, Mm. A daughter against her mother, a mm. daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's enemies will be those in his own household. Mm. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Mm. What does that mean? You cannot be my disciple. Mm -hmm. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Yeah. <laughs> and he who does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Mm. He who finds his life will lose it. Mm. And he who loses his life for my sake mm. will find it. Amen. Hallelujah. I, 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 you know, the, 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 the interesting thing I love about Jesus is that Jesus, he, he, he's so upfront. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> on his expectations. Mm. Remember what we read in Luke 14. The multitudes came to him. Mm. <laughs> the multitudes were coming to him. You know, Jesus is not one of those people that let us that, that's, um, trick you into becoming a Christian. <laughs> so after you are now a Christian and you are now entangled, then we now mm. reveal, <laughs> reveal mm. everything to you. Mm. You know, that's not what he did. Mm. He told them up front, mm. look, this is what is going to cost you mm. to be a disciple. Mm. I said, wow. Mm. It challenged me because, you know, as a pastor, you want everybody to stay. Mm. <laughs> and sometimes we want to make it so easy and so nice. And, and it, now, don't get me wrong. We shouldn't put burdens on people. You know, the, one of the condemnations Jesus gave for the Pharisees is they put burdens on people and they don't lift a finger to help them. So, you don't put, but at the same time, don't remove the yoke of Jesus. Mm. He said that my yoke is easy mm. and my burden is light. He expects us to take on that yoke. Yeah. His yoke. His yoke. So, in the name of um, letting people know the gospel, we need to let them know this is what Jesus is calling you to. Mm. Now, what he's inviting you to is his life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. To, to, to have the life of God mm. flowing through you. To mm. be united with him. Mm. To reign with him. That is what he's calling us to. Mm -hmm. So, so we should always we should tell people yes. You remember, you remember they, they asked Jesus that. What about us? Mm -hmm. <laughs> in fact, let, let's let's look at that in Mark in Mark nine. You know, Jesus said, "How hard it is." I think it's Mark nine or Mark ten. Glory be to God. No, it's Mark ten. Now, where he, we talk about the hundredfold. So Jesus said um, assuredly that. Um, you know, it's hard for a rich man to enter into heaven. I want to mean by one who trusts in riches, you know. But I want you to go to verse um, 25. Let's, yeah. 
Why don't you go ahead and read? Okay. From All, uh, 24. Let's, let's start from 26, actually. Okay, because, 26. Okay. Mm. And they were greatly astonished, saying among themselves, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, With men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. Then Peter began to say to him, See, we have left all and followed you. So Jesus answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come, eternal life. Amen. Amen. So notice, Peter said like, I mean, we've left all. Mm. We've left all. And Peter had a wife. <laughs> we, we've left mm. all. And, and Jesus said, yes, you've left all and you'll be rewarded for yeah, leaving all. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that's why we can't... Um, we can't apologize on behalf of Jesus. Mm. <laughs> because Jesus didn't say, oh, you mm. left all. I feel sorry that you left all. No. Yeah. Jesus said, no, you'll be rewarded for leaving all. Yeah. You'll be rewarded for leaving all. Mm. So there is a reward. Thank mm. God there is a reward. Mm. And Jesus told them that. And you know, you, you did this for me. I will see to it. Mm. But... It was going to cost it. And thank God there is a cost. Mm. And, and, and we need to encourage one another. Mm -hmm. We need to encourage one another. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I don't want to close on, on, on this to scare people. You mm -hmm. know, the, the, the cost, there is a grace to walk in the cost. Yeah. See, the Bible says the grace of God has appeared to all men, teaching us. The grace of God teaches us how yeah. to be a disciple. Amen. Mm -hmm teaches us how to pay that price, mm. helps us pay the price. He's not going to just call you to do it and not help you mm. to do it. But there is a grace to do it. Mm. But yeah, you, you, you will have to walk through it. Mm. But there's a grace to it. You know? And Jesus is looking for disciples. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Any, any comments? Any? No, just wanted so, to um, maybe summarize what you were mm. sharing about mm. the, the price of discipleship, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, so first of all, it looks like you can't just be a disciple by just saying, I want to be a disciple. Mm. It, it will cost you something. Otherwise, mm. you will remain in the multitude. Yes, yes. You know, yes. I mean, that scripture you read talked mm. about how the disciples had to go up with Jesus to mm. the mountain. I don't know why mm. the multitudes didn't follow mm. the disciples, but mm. Jesus saw the multitudes and then he decided he's going to go up on the mountain. And then the disciples came up to him and, mm. and he taught. Mm. You know, so very important that mm. if you do nothing, you, you'll remain as part the of multitude. the crowd. Yeah. You'll remain as part of the multitude. Mm -hmm. But being a disciple costs something and we, we walk through mm. the price. You know, the first, mm. uh, you know, one of the things we talked about is denying ourselves mm. of the things that we hold dear. Mm. You know, not that they are not important, mm. not that, mm. you know, being a wife to my mm. husband is not important, mm -hmm. but I need to prioritize yeah. God first if I want to be his disciple. disciple. In fact, and Jesus, it's not just denying yourself, it's denying yourself for him. For him, yes. Because some he people said for Jesus, just deny themselves. No, That's no, not no, what no, he's no. talking about. He said for mm. me and for the sake of, of the, the gospels, gospels. Mm. right? So, so, that, so that's very important. And then, you know, really... Taking up your cross. I don't know if mm. we use those terms explicitly, mm -hmm. but we're basically saying, you know what? As a disciple, there is a job that God has earmarked for Amen. me. Amen. And I'm going to do that job. I'm not going to let another mm. disciple mm. do what the Lord has allotted for me to mm. do. Mm. Being a disciple is not just a title. Yeah. It's not a name only. It is me saying, okay, mm. Mm. Lord... I've mm. left all and I've followed you to do something. Mm. What is that something? Mm. Well, I'm going to do mm. whatever 
you're telling me that mm. something is. I'm mm. going to fulfill that purpose. Mm. I'm going to lay hold on those talents mm. that you've given to me, whether it's one or two or five, those yeah. graces you've given to me, and I'm going to use it to your glory. I'm going to represent you. You know, so I'm taking up my cross, my part of this journey of establishing God's kingdom on yeah. the earth. I'm going to take my part as a disciple yeah. and I'm going to follow it. And I'm following Jesus. I'm not just mm. a disciple that's a lone mm. ranger. Mm. No, I'm a disciple that follows Jesus, the the uh, great master, the great yeah. teacher. You talked about how a servant, or the Bible also talks about it, how a servant is not greater than his master. Mm -hmm. But we can be like the master, yeah. you know. The and student perfected, is not greater than the like teacher. The yeah. But the student can be like the teacher. Mm -hmm. Jesus is in heaven. Hallelujah. We are his representatives here on earth. We are the body of Christ Amen. here on earth. And we ought to follow him. We are not following him in heaven as it were but we are following what he did when he was on earth and we are continuing pressing. those acts of the apostles pressing. those acts of the disciples Until who are we're pressing fully on like him exactly fully mm -hmm. like him but also making the influence that mm -hmm. he would have us make mm -hmm. as believers Amen. you know and and really finally Amen. just um as far as the price Amen. goes of of discipleship Amen. we are prioritizing Amen. what matters Amen. to god Amen. right when Amen. he talked about oh you know we're, we're living this and living that we, we really are prioritizing Amen. what is most important to jesus Amen. jesus wants a bigger family Amen. he <laughs> right? does he wants a bigger family. So it's not just for me mm. to be saved. And yes, mm. I'm going to go to heaven. Well, mm. who else are you going to bring along mm. with you? Mm. You know, who else are you going to mm. be a light, uh, you know, to? Mm. Where are you? Are you going to shine in all the areas mm. that God has sent you to? Mm. Are you going to be a river of life mm. everywhere he has placed you so mm. that we can draw more into the kingdom of mm. God and continue the mm. cycle of raising disciples? Amen. 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 I want to pray for us and we're going to... Um, consecrate ourselves mm. um you know when jesus talked about the communion in john chapter 6 he told them that you unless you eat my body and drink my blood you you you, you won't have life the bible says a lot of people who stopped following him that who, who can endure such <laughs> such a teaching because he he, he, he again the multitude came mm. and he now told them mm. this is what i want from mm. you and i i, I but I wonder, I'm going to pray. And I pray this prayer over myself because there are times when I don't feel like hmm. doing what the Lord wants. You know, the Bible says he's the one who works in us yes. to will and to do of his Amen. good pleasure. So I'm going to pray for you that God help me be a disciple. Help me, Lord. Help me be a disciple. Amen. And it's such a simple prayer, Lord, hmm. as I take the body hmm. that was broken for me hmm. and the blood that was shed for me, I receive the grace. Hmm. <laughs> to be a disciple. Yes, Lord. It, 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 grace to give you everything, mm. to, to be willing to give everything. Amen. And I receive the grace mm. to be willing to receive everything you are yes, giving me. Lord, yes. Open my eyes to see the wonder, the mm. treasure mm. in the kingdom, <laughs> to see the value of the kingdom. Mm. So that like Paul, I will say these light afflictions. Mm. I will see my problems as light mm. in the context of the glorious gospel. Mm. Father, we receive that grace right now. Mm. We let there be an impartation. Lord, this, this message mm. is not to make people feel bad or to let people know. Let us press in. Yes. <laughs> let us press in. Yes. And Lord, let there be an impartation of encouragement, Amen. of grace. I pray mm. for visions mm. and revelations and open eyes. Mm. <laughs> and people begin to have encounters where people see the glory. Mm. And to say, wow, like Abraham. Mm. And yes, I can forsake where I'm from. <laughs> mm. Because I'm looking for a, for a new city whose mm. builder is the Lord. Yeah. He saw it. And so he, he endured. So he mm. pressed. And so, Lord, I pray that we will all see. And like Paul, we will say we count everything down for the excellency yes. of gaining Christ so that we can mm. gain Christ. Mm. We receive that impartation right now. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And let's go ahead and honor the Lord with our tithes, offerings, and love gifts. Hallelujah. Amen.
A disciple wants to be like Jesus. Mm. A disciple wants to please Jesus. A disciple wants to honor Jesus. Mm. And one way we honor him is with our tithes, Mm. offerings, and love gifts. Mm. So let's go ahead and honor him, Lord. We thank you for the privilege Mm. (laughs) to give to you. We recognize that everything we have belongs Mm. to you because you created it. Mm. And out of what you've given us, Lord, we honor you Mm. in our tithes and our offerings and our love gifts. Knowing that without you, we won't have what we have. Mm. But also knowing that as we honor you, you will see to us that we have far more. (laughs) Mm. So that we can do more. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Mm. Well, thank you all so much for joining us today. I trust God that you were blessed. Thank you, Pastor Tayo, Mm -hmm. for that awesome time in the Word. Just want to invite you again um, to join us this Sunday at 2 p.m. We meet at Community Christian Church, Yellow Box, 1635 Emerson Lane, Naperville, Mm -hmm. Illinois, 60540. Don't come alone. Come with a friend. We also have Children's Church to help take care of your children, but not just take care of them, to teach them and train them in the admonition of the Lord as well. So as the adults are growing, children are also growing. So we look forward to having you. And then next week, Thursday, is going to be Thanksgiving. We will not be meeting next week, Thursday, um, because we hope you're having chicken or turkey or whatever you eat, potatoes, all sorts of potato dishes, um, you know, so... And if you don't have plans for Thanksgiving and want to come and spend the day with us, I will leave a link in the chat. Go ahead and fill that out and we'll get in touch with you. We'll love to make sure you have somebody to celebrate with this Thanksgiving. All right. With that, be blessed. Happy Thanksgiving in advance. And we'll see you two Thursdays from now and the Sunday. God bless you. Be blessed. Let's keep the beats going. The Lord is my anchor. The same one. The Lord is my anchor. Yeah, the Lord is my anchor. Sing it to him, the Lord.